All right, so let's just take a minute to talk about common Excel errors and the if error statement. It doesn't matter if you're the most talented Excel user on the planet, at one point or another, you're bound to come across some of these error messages. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not something we should be afraid of. You know, in fact, sometimes errors can be really helpful things. Um, so let's talk about five common error types, what they mean, and how we can go about trying to fix them. Uh, the first is just a series of hash marks or pound signs. Uh, what that typically means is that the column just isn't wide enough to display your values. Uh, that's the most common cause. Uh, in some cases you might get this value if Excel is having a hard time uh, recognizing a particular date value. But more often than not, the easiest fix is just to drag or double click your column border to increase your width or right click to set up a custom column width. So super easy fix there. Uh, the next error type is the name error, which means that Excel doesn't recognize text in a formula. Um, so this could happen if you typed your function name wrong, uh, if you mistyped a reference, uh, if you missed quotation marks or colons. So make sure that all of those things are correct. Uh, nine out of ten times that I get a name error, it's because I didn't surround a text string within a formula with the proper quotation marks or I left out a parenthesis or a comma somewhere in my formula. Uh, the value error means that formula has the wrong type of argument. So just make sure that your formula is not trying to do something wacky like perform an arithmetic operation on text strings. Um, make sure you don't have uh, values that may be accidentally formatted as text. If you try to multiply 8 by P, Excel is going to give you a value error. Next up, div 0. This one speaks for itself you're trying to divide by zero or by an empty cell. So just check the value of your divisor. Um, and like I mentioned, zero might be the correct number. So there's nothing wrong. Um, so you can either keep the div zero error there, or you can use an if statement, uh, specifically if error, to display an alternate value if you choose to do so. So I'm going to show you a quick example of how to do that in just a moment. Last but not least, we've got the ref error, which is that the formula is referring to a cell that's not valid. And uh, how to fix this, just make sure that you didn't move, delete, or replace cells that are referenced in your formula. Um, so for instance, if you have a lookup or reference function that's reading from a specific column of cells, and then you accidentally delete that column, uh, all of your functions that were referencing that column are now going to give you a ref error because they don't know what values or cells to read from. Um, so those are five common types of errors. Let's jump into the if error statement, which uh, is a personal favorite function of mine. It's a really great tool to eliminate annoying error messages, uh, your div zeros, your NAs, your refs, um, which can be really useful for front end formatting. Um, so that's kind of the most common application that I've found is that uh, if you're sharing something like a dashboard or presentation with colleagues or clients and you want to just polish and button it up, you can use the if error statement to customize those error messages to something a little less uh, in your face <laughs> as these Excel errors may be. The other thing I'll note is that if error can be a really great tool to eliminate errors among values because sometimes those errors will prevent Excel from performing operations on those values um, and you might want to replace uh, an NA with a zero for instance so that your statistical and arithmetic calculations uh, continue to work properly. We'll also explore that in one of the later sections, uh, but just a heads up. Syntax-wise, the if error statement is, is quite simple. Uh, just two components. It starts with your value. This could be uh, either a value itself or more likely a formula which may or may not result in an error. And then after that, you comma over to the value if error piece. And this is just the value that you want to return in the case of an error in place of the error message that it would have thrown. Um, so two examples here, you know, if we have a division problem A1 divided by B1, and we know that the B1 might potentially be a zero in some cases, we can say, all right, instead of giving me a div zero when you do this function, instead return the text string invalid formula. Uh, in this other example, we're saying if you get an error when you run this VLOOKUP function, just show me a dash in quotes, which is a lot cleaner. Uh, so pro tip, if you're writing a formula that may trigger an error, uh, like a lookup value where not all values might have a match, write the full formula first 
and then at the end, wrap it in an if error statement. Otherwise, things can get a, a little bit sketchy pretty quick, especially as we start working with some longer, more complicated nested functions. So now I just want to hop over to Excel, really quickly show you an example of how the if error statement can be used in practice. I'm going to show you more examples specific to certain formulas in the upcoming sections. But just as a quick example, we're looking at a weekly performance dashboard here. Um, we've got some volume metrics, spend, impressions, and clicks, and then a couple calculated fields. The ones that I want to focus on uh, right now are click-through rate and cost per click, uh, which are defined as clicks divided by impressions for click-through rate, and spend divided by clicks for cost per click. Um, so since we have data for spend impressions and clicks, these formulas are populating just fine. But let's say for any given week, uh, we could expect these numbers to actually drop down to zero. Um, so I'll do this for just two weeks as an example. Um, now, as you can see, these formulas are now flagging div zero errors. And it's, uh, it's kind of annoying. I could remove the green flags in the uh, Excel options. But really, I just don't want to see this error at all. But what I want to do is essentially wrap these formulas with an if error statement so that instead of div zero, I want to just show a little dash. Um, so what I'm going to do is jump to cell F6 and wrap this formula in an if error. So right after the equal sign, I'm going to type if error, open the parentheses, jump to the end, press comma, and then here's my value of error, which is just going to be a dash surrounded by quotes. Close off the parentheses and press enter. And again, we're going to practice this a bit more uh, shortly, but I'm going to do the exact same thing for the CPC column. If error, jump to the end, comma, dash, and quotes, close the parenthesis, hit enter. As you can see, nothing changed for cells F6 and G6 because the formula didn't return an error. Uh, but if I drag that down, and I'm just going to fill without formatting to preserve the formatting underlying, now you can see those div errors uh, are replaced by nice clean little dashes. So it just looks a lot nicer now, a lot more polished. Um, so there you go, just one quick example uh, of how to use if error.